I can only focus on right now. Uh, and, and for me, uh, the best James Harden is, you know, making sure I'm, I'm in shape. Like I said, I hadn't really had an opportunity to play five on five. Individual, individual workouts, weightlifting, individual basketball training is great. But, uh, you know, as M every NBA player can agree, There's no, there's no, nothing like five on five training. Hey James, I wondered, even though you won't talk about your future and all the rumors out there, do you feel like all the rumors about your future and about you wanting to be traded are a distraction to this team and the success that the team is trying to have this year? Uh, since I've since I've been here, there's nothing has been said about it. You know, everybody in the locker room, coaching staff has been focused on uh, ramping up and preparing for the season. So um, that's all that matters. Big perk, Grace on your screens. Kendrick, good to see you. I like the all black, uh, monochromatic. I'm into that. But Stephen, uh, you're up for Who looks worse here? Is it James Harden or is it Houston as a franchise? Well, I think right now, right now it's Houston. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I got to give love to my man, Vince Goodwill. Vincent Goodwill for Yahoo because uh, that's my little brother right there. And he was talking about this story from a late date to more than a year ago, year and a half ago, of course. And I also want to give props to James Harden because, listen, you don't have to answer every question if you don't want to. But he showed up there yesterday. Uh, he was right in front of the media and he just said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to get into trade speculation and all of that other stuff. He's basically saying, listen, I'm here until I'm not. Here's why I'm going to tell you the Houston Rockets look worse at this particular moment in time. With Daryl Morey being gone, with Mike D'Antoni being gone, one could easily surmise that the culture that exists within the Houston Rockets that we're all lamenting was primarily their fault because they allowed it to take place. And that's really what this comes down to. If they were still there and that's just the way that they do business, then we can look at James Harden and we could say, why would you be taking advantage of these perks? Why would you be exercising your power in that way? And to some degree, we still could say that. But the only reason why I say the Rockets primarily instead of James Harden is that if this is the culture that you allowed, you're a superstar, you bring stuff to the table. We missed the playoffs the first, the, the previous three years before you arrived. We've been in the playoffs ever since. We've been championship contenders. We've been to the conference finals twice. You're a three-time scoring champion. You're a league MVP. And not only that, minutes played, playing through injuries, games played, etc. He's right up there with the best of them. So if you take all of those things into consideration, no one can accuse him for not doing his job. And if everybody wants to complain about the culture, well, who's responsible for the culture ultimately? It certainly isn't the player. You can make a contribution to it. It would be good for you to exercise that level of professionalism. But in the end, the actual onus of the culture is on the franchise itself. They allowed it. And they knew that it could potentially alienate other folks and evidently didn't care enough to reel that in. And that's why I say as these stories unfold, even though people want to take their shots at James Harden, ultimately you're going to look at the Houston Rockets, not the present Houston Rockets, the previous regime. Maury was there. Mike D'Antoni was there. Hell, they were there before Tillman Fertitta got there for crying out loud. And he's the owner of the franchise right now. So we got to look at it that way. <clears throat> The Rockets look worse than James Harden right now. First of all, this is how business is done in the NBA. The owners have a monopoly, de facto monopoly, and so they have huge leverage in the CBA negotiations, right? They get a lot their way. But the, the, the other side of that is if you're a superstar, you got a lot of clout, and you can force the hand of a lot of teams because the fact is it's almost impossible to win a championship with at least, without at least one superstar. Superstar, not an all-star, superstar. And Harden's a superstar. Um, who looks worse right now? Guys, it's the Rockets because, let's not forget, Tillman Fertitta, really, and he told us about this on first take, and Stephen A, we've discussed it many times, not good enough, right? What Maury and D'Antoni were doing were not good enough. Wasn't good enough. You want to win a championship. And so D'Antoni was a lame duck coach. I, I, what's he going to really do as a lame duck coach? Let's see your performer else. What Tillman Fertitta I don't think understood, and I think what most people still don't understand, the Rockets should have never been as close to a championship as they were. That was because of Daryl Morey and Mike D'Antoni having the courage of their convictions to play a kind of basketball that would be criticized. Only the most efficient shots taken, right? Either you get an extra point for them or it's a really high percentage shot. That's the way they were going to play. They'd be criticized. They're not playing defense enough. They need to move the ball more, more you know, mid-range shots, all this kind of stuff. Meantime, because of the way they played, 
They took a Warriors team fully loaded with KD and Steph and Clay and Dre and everybody. Seven games. And they had a home game against that team. Right? You could say, well, really, who else was in the West? How about the Cavs in the East? Because the Cavs got swept. Cavs got swept. LeBron and Kevin Love got swept against that Golden State Warriors team that was almost beaten by the Rockets. Right? So, for Tita, that's not good enough. Daryl Morey's gone. Dan Tony's gone. Now all hell breaks loose. This is what happens. You got rid of people. You thought you'd replace them with better people. It's not trending in that direction. Who looks worse right now? And now your superstar wants out, and this is what's become of it? Clearly, Harden's like, look, I'm not cooperating with you. You got to make this move. And the Rockets are saying, no, we're not going to make it right now. Is this all in the service of winning a championship? Because that's why you get rid of Maury and D'Antoni. Seems to be backfiring. Harden's going to wind up in a position where he'll have a chance to win a championship. The Rockets will not. Well, well I have to respectfully disagree with the both of you, and here's why. Right now, to me, the Rockets, in my opinion, are moving in the right direction. They just hired a young stud in Steven Silas who is well respected around the league, not by just front offices or, or, or other coaches, but by current players, former players. They have nothing but high praise for him and says that how he's a student of the game, an offensive genius, and it's about time that he got his opportunity. So I think the Rockets did a great job by hiring Steven Silas. Second of all, with them trading Russell Westbrook, who didn't want to be there because of the lack of accountability that they were show that they were having in the Rockets organization, especially when it came down to James Harden and all the other players and all the other rumors that are coming out about James Harden not taking winning seriously, uh, you know, not wanting to uh, adjust and, uh, to giving up the club life. Right now, James Harden looks the worst. And here's why. You don't show up to camp. You sh then when you do show up to camp, you show up to camp late. And then when you do show up, you show up out of shape. And this is what I was trying to tell you and Max, Stephen A., when I was trying to have virtual school about a couple of shows ago. And I told y'all that James Harden has to go out on the court and perform at an MVP type level. Because guess what? Guess what the rumors are circling now around the front offices of, of organizations and what GMs are talking about that probably had interest in acquiring James Harden. They're saying, should I give up a, a young star and my assets for James Harden who might come in and tear down the culture, who might complain because he might not get things, if, or might just shut down because things might not go his way, or might be a bad example on the younger guys that's already here. We don't want that. So with that being said, it's on James Harden because the Rockets, in my opinion, you get back John Wall, who's happy to be in Houston. You get back some, a first-round pick. You get all these assets, and the Rockets still, right now, are a playoff team in the Western Conference. So a lot of this is on James Harden, and James Harden looks worse, not the Rockets. Well, I don't, I don't agree you with you that he looks worse. That. I, don't, I, don't dis I, don't, I don't disagree. Hold on, Max. I don't disagree with any of the points that you're making. As a matter of fact, Kendrick Perkins, I had a brother call me the other day and say that James Harden made a mistake by not signing, or, or rather it would have been better if James Harden had signed for the $50 million extension because that would have given him four years on the contract instead of two. And that brother that called me was you. So you make a very valid point, when, and you're right about that. What I'm saying to you, however, is this. <laughs> If you look at the Houston Rockets, <laughs> his own point. because of the culture that they allowed, that's the reason I'm pointing out how that is a problem for the Houston Rockets right now looking worse. Because people are looking at them, and it's not just James Harden, but you're also looking at them under the regime of Daryl Morey and said, is this what you allowed to transpire? I mean, you, you're catering to your stars to that degree? And it's a star that may not be putting forth the due diligence in terms of rallying the troops, galvanizing the troops. Because I don't think anybody could question Jay at a high level. I don't think anybody could question that about him. He shows up every night and he's the real deal. We know that about him. But the flip side is, is that when you're the leader in the face of a franchise, you got to do a little bit more than that in order to galvanize the troops around you. And part so, of the so reason that that might have gotten in the way is the Houston Rockets. 
This is why yeah, Harden yeah, actually Stephen, doesn't I can't look agree worse. With you. If you look, wait, wait, wait. This is this is why Harden doesn't actually look worse, guys. Because everyone knows this is the superstar's leverage. If he's a malcontent, if he doesn't want to be there, he's going to be unhappy. And what happens is the rest of the league knows that's a distressed asset. Perk, even if you're right, and to some, Harden looks worse, in fact, what that's going to do is further devalue him in a trade, making it easier to get to where he wants to go. Because they're not going to keep a disgruntled not... player all year. They just won't. They won't do well as a team if they do that. And so, you know who's smiling right now? You know who's sitting there smiling? Daryl Morey. If what you're saying is true, Daryl Morey is sitting back laughing, going, oh, okay, no one wants him? Bet, bet. Okay, here's our offer. Here's our offer. Great. Come on, James Harden. Join Embiid and Simmons. Daryl Morey is laughing right now if what ben you're Simmons. saying is true. Oh, you think that's just how it happened to Max? Let me tell you something. I talked to three general managers over the last three days, and they all had the same question about James Harden. Would I be would I be crazy to trade for him and give up this person or give up this person or give up these assets and bring him to this organization knowing what he brings off the court? Asking me questions about him. This is not something that I'm making up, Max Kellerman. I'm telling you something that I know. I'm telling you something that I know. So turn no your doubt. video on on your laptop okay. and listen to me as I'm teaching you and schooling you about what's going no. on. And what's happening right now is the well, front listen. offices are Professor? looking at Dennis are looking at Dennis Rodman, uh, are looking at James Harden like the modern day Dennis Rodman. He wants to be the rock star. And not and, and look, Dennis Rodman was well, a rock listen. star, but at least he showed up to work and was in shape. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is that Basketball teams are professor. now second guessing. Teams are now second guessing themselves, Max, on whether whether or not to take a chance on James Harden right. and give up so a young star.